Hi again. Um, as you can see, I've obviously laid the engine gearbox on the floor here, taking off the various fixings that hold the engine and gearbox together. It's about 10 bolts all together. Uh, a few dust covers and bits and pieces over there that will come out relatively easy. That gearbox actually fell off after that. Um, the main problem with looking at these gearboxes, I understand, with front wheel drive car, is having to be careful about the distance from here to here. The motor I've got over in that garage is actually a 10 inch diameter casing on it. Um, the drive shaft that goes in here is actually 3 inches. Uh, as you can see, just a little bit bigger. The actual drive shaft boot that's still on the car is actually 3 inches diameter. It's slightly bigger than the casing there. And that just about leaves me literally with not much to spare. Um, Basically, yeah, it looks like it might be a bit tight here. Um, if I wanted to fit the motor that's over there, the one that rotates the wrong way. Uh, yeah, basically, the trouble is that obviously the boot bit of the dry shaft can actually hit the motor casing, which obviously is not a good thing. Obviously, the boot itself or the actual casing does move around a certain degree. Not a small amount. Uh, the next thing really is to go to work tomorrow. And then uh, go and try and find this motor that I've got stored elsewhere uh, on the way home. Measure the diameter of the other motor that rotates the right way. Maybe even bring it home and have a go. Um, next thing would be to obviously try and look at the pattern here. We're looking at um, obviously having to recreate this bell housing here and redraw the holes. Some of them are threaded, as you can, as you can see. Some of them are clearance holes. There's obviously a Quite a bit of metal, it's not as big as some of the ones that we've played around with before. Um, basically, trying to recreate that bit there, obviously, line the motor up and get that bolt in on as well. Figure out how I'm going to do that. Try and run the motor at slow speed without securing all of the bolts and make sure you get everything lined up. It's a little bit of movement to move things up and down, left and right. And obviously, got to make it coupling up. The idea initially is to get the clutch off of there, which unfortunately is. Actually, I need some star sockets rather than some star screw bits to get the clutch off. But the idea is to obviously take the centre out of the clutch, which should fit on here lovely, and then somehow couple it up to the motor. Uh, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do this yet because I think my um, motor needs to mount on the bottom. It's only got fixings at the bottom, so we can have an L shaped bracket that will come up and go up here and obviously join on to the, the plate. Um, yeah, should be interesting. Um, one of the things I'm not quite sure about doing at the moment is needing to get a 12 volt charge on the the main or the the initial battery that's left in the car for one of the lights, indicators, and control gear and bulbs, obviously in bits and pieces. Um, don't really want to have to pay for a um, let's say 72 volt to 12 volt converter because they're very very expensive. And whether or not I can actually rig up the alt the alternator for the car to actually charge the on board 12 volt battery. Other alternative is just because I'm going to be using the car for probably 10 miles uh, to and from work maximum. Is whether or not the actual battery that's on there can just basically hold its own and just get charged. Uh, as a separate charger with the main battery pack, so that's another option. But one of the things I was looking at is whether or not whatever coupling I put between this and the motor, so whether or not I can actually put a pulley on there that I could drive the um, the alternator off of somehow. Uh, I'm not quite sure about that yet. That's just another thing in, in thinking. Um, what I intend to do at the moment is to put back together the the wheels here. What you can probably see is I've had to uncouple the bottom control arm from the ball joint on here to allow this this bit here which is the brake to be pulled out that's where you get your movement to get the drive shaft out of gearbox so at the moment it can't put any wheels on it can't push it around so as it's likely to be quite a while before it's uh, got a motor in it and fits to drive what I'm basically going to do is to um, put these lot back together again uh, tie the drive shafts up so at least I can push it around if I need to Obviously, there'll be a stage we'll need to get behind it um, to get, obviously, the fuel tank and bits and pieces, make some battery boxes up. And, obviously, it makes sense rather than um, just leave it sitting here doing nothing while I'm, if I'm in the middle of waiting for materials, I might as well make it movable. 
So the next plan is to try and get all back, body back together again, get the bonnet on, have a look at where else I can take off, and that's it for now. So, um, yeah, that's a bit of a tidy up and see how things are looking after.